Good evening, boys and ghouls. Welcome to Chiller Night Theater. I am your host, THE Jack Shadow. I know, I know, not everybody has a mythical Lord of the Dark Dimension visit them every week to present a classic, or not so classic, horror movie to their, to their household. But here I am. I'm a pretty big deal if you think about it. <laughs> I've got a whole realm of horror, of zombies, of vampires, werewolves, witches, goblins, trolls to roll over. But I'm here with you right now, and you're welcome. Speaking of vampires, our movie tonight is the 1960 Italian horror film, Adam Age Vampire. An exotic dancer is disfigured in a car accident, and a scientist claims to be able to restore her beauty. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, we've got a monster running around killing folks. You know how that goes. Okay, and you know how this goes. The rules for watching this show are pretty clear. Turn those lights down low. Take hold of that one beside you and settle in as we begin tonight's creature feature, Adam Age Vampire. Try to get it through your head, Jeanette. I only came in to tell you goodbye. Goodbye? Pierre! It's all over. You had your choice. Either me or the so-called profession you're working at. You're still working, so that means I'm through. Oh, please don't treat me like this. You know your ship is about to sail. It's better for us. It's easier if I go away. Easier to what? To suffer even more than we both have already? You know we belong to each other, Pierre. Oh, please, Jeanette. That's in the snow. No. Pierre! Get a move on. There's a mob of people out there. They want you to do another number. I won't do another number. I'm fed up with this job. I could read the truth in the eyes of Professor Moray. There isn't a bit of hope for me, mutilated, disfigured, forever. You might as well be prepared for the worst, but it won't make any difference to someone who really loves you. 
I don't want to be pitied by anyone, especially by him. Oh, leave me alone. At least drink a cup of tea. Leave me alone. <laughs> Dear. She has no family here, not even friends close enough to worry about her. The newspapers made that clear. Go to her. Does anyone know you in that clinic? No one. And no one must know that Jeanette Morino is coming here. No one will know. I have complete faith in you as always. And I know that I shall succeed. You're going to need me. I'll be here, Albert. Give up all hope yet. Who are you? Don't ask me questions. There isn't time. I'm an assistant to a great scientist who has come to hear of your case and wants to know more about you. He wants to give you treatment. What's the use of treatment? What's the use? You have to believe me. We have discovered a new therapy together, and it's miraculous. I guarantee it. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Now, don't tell me you're here because you want to interview me. You don't think so? Oh, well, then I won't tell you that. Did you read about that girl? Who do you mean? Oh, come on. What about this for a big headline? Jeanette Morineau, happy and beautiful as ever. Think of the mad publicity for your clinic here. Sure, but that's one headline you are never going to see in print. Why not? Doctor, we're waiting for your answer. At round. your service. So long, Leroy. See so you around. No secrecy is necessary. And I mean absolutely. Not a word to a soul. This is the only hope you have. Keep that in mind, always. You will drop out of sight for a short time. Three or four weeks at the very most. And when you reappear, everything will be as it was before. As if you had awakened from a horrible dream. Don't you believe me? Well, then do just as you wish. I have never been to see you. But we'll be expecting you. Now, don't disappoint me. I am not being immodest when I speak of a whole new era in the field of biology and therapy. The destructive and degenerative effect of atomic explosions have driven scientists more than ever before into research involving methods and processes of regeneration, rebuilding abnormal or totally destroyed cells. It is completely successful in correcting abnormal cell growth as well as in restoring cells which have been destroyed. Just as good often grows out of evil, Derma 28 has grown out of Derma 25, the serum which provoked an accelerated abnormal development of cells. When I finally succeeded in stabilizing its effect, I produced the anti-cancer vaccine, which for years had been the major goal of the most important scientific research. Repeated experiments using Derma-28 on specimens deformed by injections of Derma-25 prove its miraculous efficiency beyond a doubt. A single injection of Derma-28... Monique, what are you doing? Don't you realize... Oh, you must be completely insane. Yes, it's the Derma 25 serum that we've been injecting in so many of those poor little animals. Transforming them into monsters. You're aware of its effects. Look at that. Come on. 
You'll have to be exposed to treatment at once in the radiation chamber. No, give me an injection of Derma 28. But you know it's never been tried on human beings. I wouldn't have the courage. That's just why I did it, to force you to have the courage. No, let's wait for the girl, Jeanette Moreno. No, I want to share this honor with you. I've never been as near to you before as I am at this moment, and you will always remember it. We don't need you. Sasha, don't be troubled about me. When it's all over, you can bring me some roses. Leave us now. Quickly, every second we have is precious. Every drop of Derma 28 represents months of work and anxiety. And when the day comes when we can prepare it as rapidly as we do Derma 25... Give me we... your arm. Yes, there is no doubt. There is not the slightest doubt any longer. You see? It removes every trace of the generation of cell structure. This is a day that comes but once in a lifetime. That is our lifetime. That's right. I shall always remember everything you've done for me. Thank you. Tell me that in some other way. Tell it to Monique, not your assistant. We'll celebrate this evening. No. Let's both stay home. Together. With our records. One moment. Why do you look at me that way? For a moment there, you seem to be performing some sacred ritual. Yes, it was a ritual. Come. Is this Professor Levin? So you've come to us. I'm happy to see you. And your luggage? In the check room at the station, as you instructed. Where's the ticket? Here it is. Are you sure that no one knows you've come here? Positive. Go and pick up her luggage. Let's go into the study. Professor Levin will join us in a moment. This isn't like a clinic. No, it's not a clinic. It's the place where Dr. Levin studies and does his work with me to help him. Come now. Show me your face. Show me your face, I said. There's no doubt of it. Yes. She's disfigured forever. As if by a cancer that's beyond control, like leprosy. There's no one who can help me now. No one. Let me go away, please. I give you my word that I will restore your faith. Restore all your beauty. You're worse than all the others. Because you want to deceive me. Don't talk like that. Now pull yourself together. We have succeeded in discovering a great secret. The secret of spontaneous reproduction of living cells. It's the secret of life itself. The secret of life and also of death. Just now I deliberately spoke of cancer, of cells which proliferate unexpectedly at the expense of the organism until they have destroyed it. Well, with this remarkable discovery, we have succeeded in creating spontaneous reproduction of cells. We can rebuild cells which have been destroyed. 
We have tamed the monster which once devoured us and made it serve our own ends. You must be now. It's a miracle. And you'll be the first person in the world to benefit from it. I shall perform this miracle. <laughs> I've never believed in miracles. I've even forgotten how to pray. Oh, please let me go now. Rather than go on, I'd prefer... <laughs> You'd prefer to kill yourself. <laughs> if you've given up all hope, why didn't you do it before this? You're condemned for the rest of your life. And you know it. She knows. They all told her that. <laughs> all right. Let me kill myself. Right now. <laughs> if you really are so desperate, take your own life if you want to. Yes. I'll give this back to you. But only on that day when you look me in the face and tell me that I failed you. Do you understand, Jeanette? But until that day comes... Will you try? No, no, I beg of you. She fainted. I've had a room prepared. Oh, I'll bear. And now we must take her upstairs. She's a beautiful human specimen. Beautiful? Didn't you hear about it? No, I didn't hear anything about the accident. I was at sea. We had just sailed. But... You mean today she had all her belongings collected from the hotel tour and had them delivered here at the clinic? It's all beyond me. She told us she was going back to that apartment hotel where she lived. The same hotel tour. Jeanette must still be in town. Oh, it might mean that she's gone away. There can only be one explanation. As a nurse, I'll have to betray a secret. Jeanette Moreno didn't want you to see her again as she is. Sasha! Sasha! You let the generator go out? Chalk it up, Andre. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Trevor. Shall I add some soda? Arlette, where are you going? Well, I'll be back. It does seem impossible for a person to disappear overnight, as it were, without leaving a trace. Here, give me another one. You heard him, but he won't help anything. Two scotches, right away. What a pride has done to Jeanette. <laughs> First, the derma must be applied through an incision. Scalpel. Swab. Clamp. Derma. No effect. What can we do? Derma injection. Nothing. Still no result. What a bench. Good night, Arlette. Good night. Now, yeah, let's go home. I'm tired. So long. Jim, you still here? Uh -huh. I'll help you home. Is it too late? Yeah, it's much too late. Uh. Let me give you a lift in my car. Not a drop of the serum left. Five injections without any effect at all. And I know I was not mistaken. They took effect on you. Because then you applied it immediately. In the case of cells that are destroyed, you will have to make continuous applications. Yes, perhaps you're correct. But it will take months to prepare serum enough. Let's send her away. We'll find another subject when we've a new supply of Derma 28. And let her go around telling everyone what we did to her? We'll have to kill her. And besides, what if the Derma 28 should have some unusual effect on her? Don't forget we derived it from Derma 25. I can't bear to think of her becoming a... A monster, is that it? You worry too much about her. Albert! Look there! Janet! I never had a moment's doubt. Bring me something to drink, please. Oh, there. If you don't mind. Toast to our victory. First, take her upstairs. Well, the doctor seems a little more interested in Jeanette than Monique is comfortable with. I'm sure that won't cause any problems down the road. Right. <laughs> Anyways, that's quite some patchwork there on Jeanette's face, eh? Could you imagine it? A treatment 
that can miraculously heal and restore cells back to their original form. Seems to have worked, for now. Even still, Professor Levin isn't quite ready to celebrate just yet. I think he anticipates more work to come. I mean, if it were this easy, we'd only have about a, a 20 minute movie so far. So we'll see some bumps on the road ahead. And they're coming. Oh, ho, ho, yes, indeed. Now, tonight's movie, Adam Age Vampire, was released in Italy in August of 1960. Adam Age Vampire is the American title of the movie, even though there are no vampires in the movie. But don't worry, Chiller fans. <laughs> there is an actual monster in tonight's creature feature that we'll see introduced in the next movie segment. Then why in the world is the word vampire even used? I'll explain that later on in the show. But the title, as so many titles did back in that era, capitalized on science and the horrors and mysteries of nuclear power. Horror movies had run their course and began to waver around the time of World War II. After the real destruction caused by the atom bombs dropped onto Japan, the terror from the movie Frankensteins, vampires, and werewolves seemed a bit trivial and were forced into the back burner for a while. The marvels of science have become the new horror. Now let's return to the twisted science of the mad doctor in Adam Age Vampire. Albert. shock is completely over. There can't be any more doubt of it. We've won. Doesn't it please you? Yes. But right at the moment, all I'm able to feel is sheer exhaustion. It's as if I were afraid. Of what? Will there be after effects now? Will the regeneration of cells continue as it should? I'm sure it will. Have I slept too long? You? Yes, Jeanette. It's Professor Levin, the man who has... Give me your hand. life itself. Jeanette! Get back in bed now. You have suffered great physical shock with all this. You've recovered, yes, but we must wait a bit. We must be certain what the results are. Absolutely sure. Don't doubt it, Jeanette. The miracle has happened to you. And you will remain with us until we are sure that we can proclaim it to the entire world. Another one? Another one. Don't you feel happy? Don't you want to laugh and sing for joy? <laughs> and Monique? I wonder why she hasn't returned. I suppose she has an experiment she's working on. Anyway, isn't it better like this? We are seldom without Monique. Ha, ha, ha. 
around here? Do you remember how you embraced me when you first saw that you were cured? What was then gratitude has already become love. You shouldn't believe that. If I loved you, I would surely tell you. I'll tell you. You love me. You weren't able to see clearly inside your heart, and you're still too upset by everything that has happened in your life. But you love me. You must know you love me. I have snatched you away from desperation and from death. It is I who restored your beauty. It is I who need you. I'll never be able to live without you. Albert. No, Jeanette. You are nothing if not mine. You belong to me. Wait a moment. I'd almost forgotten. Excuse me, one moment. Albert. Tell me what it is. Nothing. Nothing at all. Something rather urgent, which I've forgotten to tell Monique. Monique! 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 Oh, I don't know what's wrong. It's just though my face were on fire. Sit down here a moment. You'll be all right. Monique, I don't understand. Albert, what's wrong with me? I am here, Jeanette. Just relax. You're very tired. Now she will sleep soundly for several hours. Time is pressing. Move her to the laboratory at once. It must be a success. It must be, understand? Don't count any longer on me. Monique! She means more to you now than just an experiment. Monique! I cannot do it without you. Then I'll make a condition. You know what it is. Yes, never see her again. I give you my word, believe me. Sasha, help us carry her to the laboratory. I've prepared everything, but what's to be done? Ah, if there were only a single drop of it still left. But there isn't any. I refuse to give up now. We'll try radiation. Have you gone mad? Yes, yes, I know it's madness. But I'm willing to take any risk for her. You know very well it's useless. Her scar tissue is forming again, and radioactive treatment is effective only against Derma 25. Jeanette. She mustn't suffer like this. There's always surgery and insertion. You're out of your mind. That's it. It's the only possible solution. I'll transplant directly from another human being those glands which produce Derma 28. From another woman, a young one. Out there. You must be insane. You've gone mad over her. I gave you my solemn word. Now I know that I can't trust you. How will you ever accomplish it? By murdering the first woman that passes. And if the after effects are no different, you'll kill another woman and another. But I refuse to be your Monique. accomplice. And if they ask for the truth, I'll tell I'll tell you here. Monique, come back here. Monique! Monique! Listen to me, Monique. Stop it. We've already said enough to each other. She's lying down there alone. It's not possible to save her. What can we do? But I am still here, and so are you. What more do you want of me? Sacrifice myself for her? You're impossible. Yes, it's true. I'm infatuated with her, but it will pass. Pass away. It's not love, really. It's a sentimental complex. It's only a compulsion, if you like. I want to dominate the girl, to possess her creatively. You will have to help me in this also. Help me overcome this infatuation. Struggle along with me as you always have done before. Can't you manage to convince yourself she will remain like this? Like this? She 
has nothing to do with the two of us. I promise we will send her far away. Far away. I will forget her. We will start all over again and be successful. Please try to be the same intelligent woman you've always been. You know, I would kill a thousand times before I would admit defeat. Please be reasonable. You know that we're bound together forever. Forever and Police Commissioner Bouchard, Professor Levin, aren't you? Have we met before? No, but your name is so well known. And your photographs, your television interviews. Permit me, Bubay, pathologist. Marais, my assistant. I'm sorry we have to disturb you personally this way. You did telephone us, didn't you? I'm all alone here at the moment. Shall we go inside? Good. Chief, I'm out of cigarettes. Do you mind if I... Yes. Can't you go half an hour without smoking? What is it, Sasha? Why did you come in without knocking on my door? Did Professor Levin send you? Oh, I have a splitting headache. Oh, yes. The champagne. Where is Monique? What's happened to Monique? No. No, it's not true. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Monique! Monique! Paralysis of the heart. It's quite obvious. Uh-huh. And she showed no symptoms? No warning beforehand? Oh, yes. I've kept her under special care for almost two years. I'll make out the certificate at once. Without an autopsy? An autopsy. I've already confirmed the diagnosis given by Dr. Levin. And out of consideration... No, no. If it's usual practice... Inspector, if the decision lies within my jurisdiction, I say no autopsy. Oh, no. If one isn't necessary. Absolutely not. She was from Cherbourg. Monique Rivière. You will find her identity card and papers in her room. She suffered from dizzy spells and palpitations. I should show you something. Ah, here it is. This is her most recent electrocardiogram. I kept it where she wouldn't find it. Better show this thing to our pathologist. For me, it's Chinese. You know, Professor, I'd say I know you intimately. Oh, does that amaze you? Well, it doesn't take a long white beard to be a scientist and a famous one. But I know your articles, I've read your interviews, and I saw you on television when you returned from Japan. Oh, by the way, these strange-looking bottles, are they from... Yes, Hiroshima. A process of deformative fusion of bottles, glasses, and ceramics near each other. The people of Hiroshima sell them as souvenirs. Well, anyway, it's a rather shocking sight. And did you remain a long time there? Sit down, please. For eight months at the Japanese Institute for Radiological Research. Oh, how interesting. Please. Uh, thank you. I gave up smoking. Then you've had a close look at those poor creatures. Certainly. And from then on, I've devoted my life to such research. What research exactly? Are you acquainted with the field of genetic mutations? Yes, vaguely speaking. Frogs that after the atomic explosion produce frogs with two heads. Exactly. Suppose that mutations could be made permanent or not, as we please. Imagine, if this were so, what extraordinary developments it could lead to. What you mean is exploit the horror by extracting its advantages. The bad which justifies the good, is that it? More or less, I suppose. 
During your television interview, you showed some photos that were most interesting. Oh, yes. They're in this album. May I? Please do. Mm. Poor wretched people. And the psychological consequences in these victims? That's a most intelligent question. Well, the relationship between body and soul has not yet been established. Hmm. A problem we can let go by, I think. Or am I wrong? Well, then, Doctor? I've made out the certificate. Paralysis of the heart. I'm glad to be alive. Thank you for making me so happy. I didn't want you to get the impression that you're a prisoner there, on my account, to necessity of keeping everything a secret. What are you looking at? The water. The water? Yes, I'm sorry. Isn't there any music? Jeanette, you're so distant. Oh, Albert, please don't make me explain. All right. No, no one could suppose that the escape from the zoo would lead to tragedy. But who, if not a wild beast with the most ferocious instinct, could I have killed to hear the poor girl with such savage fury? There is no doubt that the girl Albert. called Mark huh? was a victim of the gorilla which escaped. What is it? I feel cold suddenly, and my face is burning like the other night. The night, Monique. Don't get excited. We are going back home. I wonder what it is. Put them on now. Your glasses. Annette is upstairs in her room. She won't wake up for several hours. But I want you to watch outside her door and don't move from there till you see me. Put this stuff somewhere else. I must save her at any cost. I'd give my life to save her. There's always one way. Insertion. Transplant the glass of another woman. A young one. What more do you want me to do? Sacrifice myself for her? Yes. Another one like Monique. And a theatrical sex for the same. Another and another until I save her once and for all. But I don't have the courage. I don't want to kill again. Everyone knows you, your articles, your interviews on television. Yes, I know, I know. But who, if not a wild beast with the most ferocious instinct, could have killed the poor girl with such savage fury? Yes, number 25. Exactly, number 25. Can create a monster. A monster who doesn't.
Young lady. Huh? Hey, it's late. Come here. I'll give you anything you ask. All right. You really gave me a turn. What are we playing? Hide and seek? <laughs> from a viewer, Tom Neiman, which I'll share. Dear Mr. Shadow, I've been watching your show every Saturday night, and I have also seen you in the House of Terror and the Dark Domain haunted houses over the last few years. It seems to me that you might have some acting skills. If so, where did you train for theater? Yours truly, Tom. But Tom, it's important to regale the masses with a touch of theatrics as a critical way of setting the atmosphere. Training and passing of the arts are key components to putting on a good show. However, myself and Professor Graves are not acting. This is our life, so to speak. Even the dead must earn a living. It's what we do. Think of it as reality television of the undead. However, an appreciation for theater is a healthy expression of one's soul. If I had one. Allow us to demonstrate. Seems, madam, nay it is, I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, no customary suits of solid black, no windy suspirations of false breath, no, nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected havior of the visage. Together with all forms, mode, shows of grief that can denote me truly, these indeed seem. For they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passive show. These, the trappings, and suits of woe. That was Hamlet from the play Hamlet. Adrian! That was Rocky from the movie. Rocky. Oh, well done, Professor Graves. Well done indeed. Hollywood will be knocking on that cellar door any time now. Are you convinced now? Oh, but... Think calmly. And without this obsession for your looking glass. I know, you're thinking of yesterday. I'm still upset myself. You're afraid the cure will not be permanent. But you're mistaken. Now it's only a question of cell growth. I've already solved this problem. We must allow the cells we've regenerated to achieve lasting stability, nourish them artificially for a time. And especially with a transplant. Transplant? Yes, it must be done. And it must be done more than once. Why are you staring at me? I told you I'm tired and upset. 
I spent the whole night working in the laboratory so you could wake up as you are. How many more times will you have to treat me? A few. Very few. No one hopes so more than I do. You could never understand what it has cost me to make you well again. And yet, all I would have to do is tell you to make you realize how deeply I love you. Jeanette! No! Leave me alone, Albert. Please go. I must get dressed now. We can see each other later out in the garden. Very well, then. Hello? Yes, Lieutenant Mornay is still on board the Garonne. He's now in Cape Town. I have a communication for him. It's very urgent that I reach him. Could you possibly forward a letter? Certainly, by airmail. He has a stopover on the return voyage. Please, don't mention it. Excuse me, Sasha. I haven't any more cigarettes, and you know I only smoke this kind. Please go and buy me some. Uh, while you're at it, would you mail this letter? And get something for yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, please take it. Do take it. You will remember to mail the letter, won't you? Thank you. Dear my darling, nothing has changed between us, at least not for me, and I need you desperately. Pierre, I'm afraid. Thank you, Sasha. You did very well. Yes, yes, I know I can rely on you at any time. This letter of hers... No, 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 I won't say a word. But don't you permit her to be out of your sight when I'm not around, and disconnect the telephone the way I showed you. Sasha, this evening I have to do some work around here, and I don't want to be disturbed at all unless I call you myself. Do you understand? Oh. Run along. Get on home now. Aren't you afraid you'll meet the gorilla? The gorilla. I'd rather meet him than some men I know.
Hurry, get the bar set up. Our right. Why must you always be late? Huh? I'm all ready to go. Well, look who's here. Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> it's been ages. How are you? Don't tell me you've been pining for me. Well, I have, if you want to know. I have on. Am I wrong, or are you getting fatter? It's becoming, isn't it? <laughs> hey, hey, good yeah. evening. Hey, yeah, cool, buddy. A carton hey, of cigarettes if you play me something. Yeah, yeah. But only for me here. No, Let's huh? get with it, boys. We got a paying customer. Sit down here. Garon. That's Pierre Moniz's ship. And it docked here today. Where's the key to the front gate? Uh, uh, Idiot! Oh, oh. Oh. Hurry, come with me. Hey, lady. Look, let's go. Come aboard. No, thanks. I'd rather wait down here. Leave it. <gasps> Jeanette. Jeanette. You've recovered. Why didn't they tell me at the clinic when I looked for you? But they told me you'd always be disfigured. Didn't you ever want to see me? It was the truth, dear, the truth, I swear. Where have you been? You can let me know. Where were you staying? What happened to you? Didn't you receive my letter? What letter? Oh, Pierre, take me away. I'm so frightened. Of what? Tell me. Ah. Ah. Positive that she's the same person. There's no doubt about it. And this one showing the scars was given to me at the clinic that's on her way disfigured forever. Yes, yes. The photographs are of the same girl, I agree. But I was referring to the person you met tonight on the waterfront. You don't think that. Oh, perhaps... no, Commissioner. It was she in front of me. But in the dark, with the fog and all. But I know her. I couldn't possibly be mistaken. There's no Jeanette Morino listed with the Bureau of Missing Persons. But she's not a missing person. She's here. I've seen her. She has no relatives in town, even if she'd been kidnapped. Listen, you know, I want to believe you. I remember the auto accident from which Jeanette Morino barely escaped with her life. But this story of a recovery is impossible. Yet she's cured. Perfectly normal. It's her same face. But who would be likely to hide such a miracle as that? Whoever it was who tried to kill me. For what reason? An hour ago, in Rue Dorme, Police Sergeant Brundell recovered a stolen automobile. This is the license number. Hmm. You want to rejuvenate me? How long has it been since I bothered about stolen cars? The same automobile, a short time before, just about the same moment the assault occurred, was stopped for speeding on the Esplanade, where it passes the waterfront by Patrolman Cholin. Inside, as well as the driver, there was an unconscious woman and a doctor taking her to the hospital. You see? Check the hospital. I've already telephoned. There's no record of her. Maybe he was taking her to a private clinic. The name of the doctor. Well, Chalant didn't bother to ask him that under the circumstances. It could have been a doctor who commandeered the first automobile he found. Or a clever criminal who would say anything to avoid identifying either himself or the woman. Jeanette. Perhaps. But there happens to be a real doctor who might give us some information about this miraculous recovery. Will you let me come with you? Yes, but on one condition, however, that... No, I'll tell you in the car. Ah, good evening.
Good evening, Professor Levin. Please excuse us if we're... Oh, this is Police Sergeant Durand. Marais, I think you already know. Excuse the interruption if we're disturbing you at this hour, but passing in front of your villa, I thought, why don't I leave it up to you, Professor Levin, to clarify a scientific problem we have? You were so extremely kind to me when we met each other that time before in those unfortunate circumstances. Oh, yes. My poor assistant had passed away. Monique Riviere. You may go, Sasha. Hmm. Sasha. <laughs> He's a strange one. He's my factotum. Cares for the garden more than anything. Mm -hmm. A mute. The soul of fidelity. An expert with flowers. The classic one to suspect in a mystery story, if there were anything to suspect him of. <laughs> may I offer you a drink, Inspector? Yes, yes. Let's be comfortable. We must try to make it easy for Professor Levin to forget that we're policemen. Did you notice these bottles? He got them as a souvenir of Hiroshima. Interesting, aren't they, Duran? <laughs> you don't have to blow smoke under my nose. Excuse me. Here you are. Thank you. If you please. Now then, Inspector. Ah, I'll make it brief. Look here, Professor. Have you been following an A-class squad? All that Tommy Rot about Sadoc, the monster? Not so safe. Tommy Rot is the right word for it. Cheap, sensational journalism. Chief? All right, go out and smoke. If you don't mind, that is. But I... I still don't comprehend. The time before, I asked you a question which you were kind enough to say was intelligent. About the psychological reaction of the victims of an atomic explosion. Well, then... Perhaps my own supposition will be an absurd one. But think of the ships that arrive here from Japan. And this, uh, Sedoc. Is it possible that he's one of those? I see. You've been impressed by the recurring factor in these cases of the wound from the throat to the sternum. The obsession of a vindictive-minded man who has been poisoned or disfigured forever by atomic radiation. One might even say, a vampire of the atom age who wants to recover. Exactly. What do you say? The hypothesis is melodramatic, but not to be excluded. You just said the hypothesis is melodramatic, but the fact that you don't exclude it altogether puts me, how shall I say, more at peace with my own conscience. We mustn't let our feet get too far off the ground. Chief, the photograph? Ah, right. Excuse me, I had another purpose in coming here to see you. Look here. Examine these two photos. Do you believe that a woman reduced to such a state as this might recover altogether? What I mean is, without any scar, without a trace. I should say not. This state of disfiguration is permanent. Nevertheless, Professor, Let I... Let me do the talking, Duran. Nevertheless, there is someone who swears that he's seen this woman, the way she was. That's impossible. And if there did exist a cure, I don't know, a process we never heard Any of... Any man who had discovered one would be a celebrity. Mm-hmm. And I assure you, I'd be the first to envy him. Mm, I imagine so. All right, then. This other photo, which was submitted to me as proof of her actual recovery, must have been taken at some time prior to her accident. Pity. The signature was not dated. Ah, right. It wasn't. And besides, even if it had been, it could easily have been faked. Professor, I'm ready to swear that the... You're on. We've been disturbing you long enough. We're most grateful, Professor. I'll accompany you. Marais? Ah, we're leaving. Duran. <laughs> Professor, you must feel rather lonely here. Such a big house. Don't you have a new assistant? Do you think it's so simple to find one? And moreover, I'm enjoying a period of repose right now. I merely study for relaxation. You know, Professor, what I envy you is your gardener, Sasha. Really? A bit difficult to believe that. No, it's just that I'm a flower gardener on my days off. Imagine, Inspector, he even works at night. Maybe he's expecting a frost. I know what you mean. You're dying to have a look inside that greenhouse. But I don't think at this hour... No, 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 indeed. Sasha would be delighted to have you look in. I'll wait for you in the car. What for? Why don't you come too, Duran? This way. 
This is Sasha's kingdom. There are his plants, there are his roses. Sasha, you're honored. These gentlemen have come to admire your beautiful greenhouse. It's really beautiful, too. Well, you ought to know. Flowers, nothing else of any interest. And Sasha is always busy with them. He doesn't even have time to read mystery stories. Yes, and no wonder. Well, good night, Professor. And excuse us again. Sasha, accompany the gentleman to the gate. You're on. Aren't you coming? Good night, Professor. Good night, sir. What is the purpose of this autopsy? Now, Doctor, I've already arranged for the body to be exhumed, and I must ask you to proceed without any further argument. Very well, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Garage, I want my car at the door in ten minutes. Good morning, Doctor. Hmm. You want a cigarette, Chief? Listen, Mahre, I've just had an idea. I want you to keep that villa, Professor Levins, under observation. Why, do you yes. think that... Well... Hi, Chief. You want a good lesson, huh? What are you shouting for? What's wrong with you? No, let go of me. I want to get out of here. I'm afraid. For me? Of the man to whom you owe everything and who loves you? You're not telling the truth. You want to go back to Pierre. But I'm going to save you now in spite of yourself. Yes, I want to go to Pierre. I don't care if I'm scarred for life because I know now that he will love me anyway. You think so? Well, your scars are already returning. Oh. Embryonic still and all but invisible. <gasps> But if this action is not arrested almost immediately, you will turn into just what you were before. <laughs> yes, the thing will get worse. It will devour you bit by bit. It will transform you into an animal like a monster under the very eyes of your Pierre. I don't want to stay here anymore. I don't want to. <laughs> Listen. I give you my word of honor. It will only take a few days, perhaps only one day, to make the final application. And then you'll be cured forever. Free to go where you please and with whom you please. If you're ungrateful enough to leave me for a man who has done nothing for you, you deserve nothing else. But until you're cured, don't try any more to run away. Don't try to see anyone. Will you promise this? Look here. I'll even give this back to you. You have no more reason to kill yourself. What is it? Who? The police. The inspector? Chair. Who is here? Who is here? Chair. <gasps> Sasha. Let her go. Yes. Run to him. Let him see you like this. Go away with him as you are. <gasps> Remember, I gave you my word, and I shall keep it. It will be your decision, then. In the meantime, you will help me to finish it. It is not Albert who is speaking now, but Professor Levin. I have to win, you see. This is all I'm asking of you.
See? I told you earlier that there's a monster in tonight's film. Well, I'd say it's more of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of creature instead of a vampire. So why use the word vampire in the American title? Well, I don't know if the movie has made it real clear, but the monster's victims all have holes in their necks where the creature extracts the glands needed for his derma serum. So, vampire. I know, I know. Hey, it wasn't my idea. I don't make them, folks. I just show them. So by now, we know that years ago, Dr. Levine studied the effects of radiation on skin tissue while in post-Hiroshima, Japan. During his studies and experiments, he later transforms into the hideous creature, who is certainly not a vampire, but does run around killing women and generally making a mess of things and all that. You know, I see the problem here, I really do. Dr. Levin may be a brilliant scientist, but he tends to fall in love way too quickly. Really, I mean, that's the basis of all the craziness that's going on tonight. He became instantly infatuated. He fell so deeply in love with Jeanette in like two minutes, and is willing to do anything to be with her. Anything, including kill. Now that's really not love. It's obsession. And obsession has more to do with the individual than the object of their affection. It's not love, and it's not healthy. So your tip of the night from Jack Shadow is, if you meet someone who says that they love you, they lock you in a room, they try to kill your boyfriend by pushing him off a boat dock into the water, kills a slew of women and injects you with a serum made from the secretions of their glands, Cross them off your list. You just don't need that kind of trouble in your life. Now that's great advice, and you're welcome. Now let's get back to the conclusion to Adam Age Vampire. You wanted to see me, Sergeant? I'm sorry to disturb you. Why be sorry at all? Disturbances are part of your profession. I'm not really a policeman. Oh, no? Then please explain why you dared pass yourself off as a policeman and for what reason the commissioner... It was my fault. I was so anxious to learn more about your research that I asked permission to come with him. But on the other hand, coming here so late at night and not having time to explain... Sit down. What should you have said? That you had a personal interest in the case of that unfortunate young lady. What is her name again? Ah, yes. Jeanette Morineau. You know, you were not very convincing as a policeman. <laughs> yes, I guess I wasn't. You're right, Professor. It's true. The photo of Jeanette with the signature was really taken before the accident. <sighs> but I know I've seen her. I know it was she. She, Jeanette. Yesterday, in front of me. Beautiful as before where my ship is tied up. I talked with her just as I'm talking with you. And if they hadn't attacked me right then? You were attacked? Yes, and from behind. Because I know there's some mystery concerning Jeanette, and I was about to learn it. You love her, that is evident. I wonder if you had parted with her sentimentally, I mean, before you were actually separated. How did you know that? I'm also a psychiatrist. Don't forget it. You are now suffering from an obsession to find her again. You're capable of seeing her and every woman you run into. And perhaps yesterday on that very same pier where often before Jeanette was waiting after a long voyage... No, it was no hallucination. And how can you explain the attack on me? Well, maybe an attempted robbery. Yes, it wouldn't be the first time on the waterfront. See? And perhaps the night was foggy. Perhaps you'd also been drinking a bit. No, I wasn't drinking. It was she, all right. Will you please tell me what you wanted me to do for you? Please help me to convince the police. Tell them that this miraculous recovery is possible. They'll go on looking for her. And for a woman, not a phantom. That's to be excluded. Then you advise me to give up every hope? In your position, I would say yes. No. I love her too much for that. Or disfigured when I find her, as long as I find her, and if you should find her 
an entirely different woman. Yes, a woman who is no longer yours, doesn't love you anymore. This is what I'm excluding. I see there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. I'm very sorry. Thank you, Professor. No, no, there's no need to thank me. Why should you? Sasha! Accompany the gentleman. I hope I see you again, sir. Goodbye, Mr... No, why bother to give me your name? I don't think there'll be any further occasion to see each other. You could hear his voice. All you had to do was open the door, and you didn't do it. I didn't do it because... You didn't do it. I was sure that I could rely on you. Now wait for me here. If I leave you alone, it's because I have to do still once more what no other man ever did for the woman he loved. Tomorrow, there'll be nothing here. Oh, if I could only tell you the truth. What do you mean, the truth? You must wait for me. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Follow us. Step on it. Very good. In his automobile. Have you arranged for reinforcements? Take all precautions. Exactly where is he at the moment? Occupied? No, indeed. Can you see all right? Watch yourself now, Buster. Let's not start on your bed, huh? Have a light, please. Thank you. Another woman in the waterfront neighborhood again, but is the woman dead? Hmm, that's a blessing. Yes. 
Yes, naturally. A little arm throw out the zone and declare an emergency. Professor Levin? He sat through the whole film and then he went out. Gerard's telling him. We're waiting here for further instructions. I told you, Chief. Were you both inside the whole Why? time? No, we both took turns. He didn't move one. Not one. Let's go in. Leroy. Well, what are you up to? I'll come clean with you now, Chief. If you won't let me chase Ted up, then I'll chase you. As you can see, it's your fault. Well, from now on, you mind your own business, get me? That's your orders, Chief. Where was he sitting? He never moved once. Where was he sitting, I asked you? Right here, Inspector, in this row here. This one. He was sitting in this seat. And you never let him out of your sight, huh? Well, I slipped outside for a minute to buy some cigarettes. But I never let him out of sight. And who was there sitting next to you? If what I think is true, you'll be back in a beaten uniform. That reminds me, what was he wearing? Yes, what did he have well, on? You could see that he was wearing a camel's hair coat, Inspector. Yeah, that's like opening a phone book to the name Smith. He sat here, you say? Right here, sir. Where were you two sitting? We were back there. That's right. Inspector, headquarters told me I would probably find you here. The autopsy I did on Monique Riviere. Incredible. I'll never be able to forgive myself. You mean like the others? And this stuff, what do you think it is? It's blood, there's no doubt about that. I don't know if it's human or... And what else do you think it might be? Have it examined right away. The rest of you come with me. Courage, at least, because in a moment or two you will go mad. 
mad with horror you don't know. <laughs> That's right, don't look at me. It's better that you don't look at me. But believe me when I say you can still save me if you would say to me... No, I can't do it! No. So you say no. Well, then get dressed. I'll give you one minute and no more. You're coming with me whether you want to or not. I don't know what will become of us. It doesn't matter anymore. But you'll never see your Pierre again. You are mine. Mine! I kill you first. Now get dressed. <laughs> Albert, have you no pity? Pity? That's what I ask of you. I. No! through the window pane. Come out, Levin! Come out with your hands up! No. Jeanette! No, come back! Get 
Pierre! Pierre! Take that man out of here. Well, come on, give me a light. I like how the police just unleash a hailstorm of bullets into the greenhouse, not being able to see anyone inside. Now, they could have hit the bad guys. They could have hit Jeanette. They might have hit them both. Eh, best leave that type of thing to chance, I guess. Luckily, they missed everyone inside. They must take the firearms training from the Star Wars Imperial Stormtroopers. <laughs> Pretty much can't hit a thing. What a happy ending for Jeanette and Pierre. I mean, they go off together and live another day. Good on them. Bad for the Adam Age vampire, Professor Levine. I hope you enjoyed the movie tonight. Join me next week as I feature yet another spooky chiller feature. So have a frightening night, and I'll see you next week. Until then, I bid you adieu, my children of the night.